Okay, so painting's done. Time to get all of the brakes and airlines and all that figured out. But that runs into a problem because I didn't have any of those parts to begin with. So we ran into some problems. We overcame. But uh, watch me make this trailer brand spanking new. Here we go. Okay, this is our camshaft, and this was the biggest holdup of the entire brake assembly. Now, very simple brakes. We've got a, a little plate to keep the grease from sliding into the into the brakes, and then we have an S cam, and it's called that because it looks like an S. As this cam rotates, it opens up the brakes by forcing the rollers up on the high spot. That jams the brakes against the drum and that slows your brakes down. Now, we did not have camshafts. The previous shop took it apart, didn't save any of the parts, and we bought it as an abandoned project. Now, the issue was that I didn't know the length of the cam or what specific cam. So I reached out to Witsko, who told me that I needed a 28 inch camshaft. So that was special order with the serial number. So we ordered it and it took seven weeks to come in. Unfortunately, when I put it in, I measured wrong and they were too long. So we got everything from Transaxle this time and the camshafts that I did need were in stock and I had them the next day. Transaxle and Henderson were fantastic. They took the camshafts back. Transaxle did all the paperwork and the phone calls to be able to do that. And that is the reason why I didn't replace the whole axle as a whole because I worried that one thing was wrong and it would set us way back. So very happy that we went the route that we did and thank you Transaxle for making that work. On the Kenworth, we used traction in Hamilton and over two thirds of the parts were incorrect. It was a lot of going back and forth and that was with serial numbers and parts in hand. So my uh, experience with Transaxle has been 10 times better than traction, unfortunately. So we replaced the bushings inside and the seals on both sides. And for replacing camshaft, we're gonna be replaced the bushings and those come as a kit. And then also replace the bushings and the seals on the inside. So now our camshafts have no play, are nicely lubed up, are shimmed properly, snap rings are in place, and everything's all set. All the hubs got brand new seals and I did look at pricing a replacement hub because it comes with the longer studs so you can put a double aluminum rim on there but it was still more cost effective to replace the seal and the inside and the outside bearings on the ones that were shot there's only two that needed bearings the other bearings were fine we've got new dust caps for them um, or end caps but I'm not going to replace those until I'm done rolling it over in case that gets hit and gets damaged. That a little aluminum and plastic piece will shatter and everything else is fine. So we've got new brake shoes, new drums, new hardware. And I know you guys are gonna say something about me lifting the drums onto the uh, shoes by hand. 
and you're gonna say, oh, my back looks tired doing that. And I'm just curious if you guys go to the gym and when people are lifting weights, that you stand there and go, oh, you're making me tired watching you lift weights. Lift with your legs, not with your back, and then you don't have to pay to go to the gym. <laughs> so if your back is extremely sore the next day, you did something wrong. If it's a little tight because you're using muscles that you don't always use, you're doing a good job and you're staying in shape. Okay, so that is all of the brakes done. Um, now, uh, these pins that the, the brakes ride on, um, a lot of mechanics don't swap these out and they're probably okay. Your brakes would wear more than these pins would. But um, this Princess Auto uh, ball joint clamp actually works really good. And even with the one inch gun on there, um, it held up pretty good. So um, I think it's worth swapping when you put the never sees on them and kind of go over everything. It's not so bad, but um, yeah, it has been a while since I've done brakes. I did them on the Kenworth, but it's not that I do this every day, but I made some homemade tools. I made a uh, piece of steel that just has an edge on it to push against these. Um, still need a little bit of heat. I don't like banging on them with a hammer or a sledge, knocking them out, because I've seen the ears fold over. But with the uh, ball joint press, it actually uh, doesn't put much load on it. So I'm going to put a nut on there with all my leftover pipe, or stack a couple of these on there or whatever and then just put a nut on it to keep the drum tight i put the old cast back on again because i'm going to flip it back over upside down um catch and paint the last of the black um now that i got the new angle and then we'll install all the air tanks brake chambers airlines slack adjusters and um whatever else underneath there so i'm going to clean up hopefully i got enough light left i doubt it but i'll run over grab the uh, michelin again We'll flip this over. I'm not gonna put it on the blocks anymore. I think we can get rid of the blocks and just lay it on the ground. We'll support that other end. And then it's nice working upside down. Wheel bearings are set properly now. I can give my sockets back to Phil. I didn't mean to buy them. And then he wasn't, I was working late at night. So I did use a pipe wrench. Don't use a pipe wrench. Um, <laughs> to use a pipe wrench to take it apart. Don't use it to put it back together again. But uh, that was a huge step. That is a lot of money all in there putting that together making it go proper and uh, we're getting that much closer to having a pull behind that beautiful track so enough talking here we go installing our slack adjusters, our brake chambers, our air tanks, but before I do that I'm going to replace all the air lines that I can see because they all got sandblasted and I don't know what shape they're in. So while the trailer's upside down, I might as well replace the air lines. Replacing the shocks ended up being pretty simple because the bolts did not get stuck inside the threads inside the frame. If they get piled up, you're in trouble. But we were able to um, replace all of the shocks after everything's been painted inside. And yet, no, they are not on upside down because the trailer is upside down. Okay, things are coming back together nicely. 
Now, when you take stuff apart, I mark things with zip ties. So like this one is a long zip tie. So I gotta find a hose that has a long zip tie and that is at the end of that hose. I don't know if you can see it. This one has been cut. So I know that that one, I need to look for a zip tie that's cut. This hose goes with this one because it's a different size that would pop right on there. And I've replaced that hose already with this one. And then I just zip tied the end of it to it. So I know that this one goes right here. A little bit more complicated with the lift axle because of the way the brakes work, but it's a pretty neat system where you've got air tanks that fill up and those are basically just relay valves where you step on the brake and it releases all the air in the tanks to the brakes to make the brakes work. I left everything alone. I don't know where that one goes. Actually, I do know where that one goes. That one just goes to the other pot. Perfect. Okay, <laughs> smart. So uh, replacing all the, all the fittings and the lines, thread sealant where I don't want it to move ever again and never sees on the parts that I do want to have move again, but I'm getting closer. I know that I'm still gonna probably mess some stuff up, but that's okay. Um, we'll figure that out. We can air everything up, make sure that we got no leaks. Uh, we're tying all the hoses down so that they don't um, rub, keeping in mind that anything that's on the axles will go up and down with the airbags. Now I replaced one airbag and I really do want to replace the other ones, but each airbag is close to 300 bucks. So um, 300, 600, 900, 1200, 1500 plus taxes, um, another two grand. So for now, we're going to leave them, hope for the best. We'll definitely put that on the list for things to do later at some point i know i'm gonna regret it I, I know i'm gonna regret not replacing the airbag and you'll see that video it'll be very entertaining with us by the side of the road but for now um we're getting kind of close to uh everything's over budget and that's the way she goes um so anyway uh we're gonna keep carrying on for now this year we're not planning too many big long trips the farthest one is two and a half hours away um but it's on the highway so it's not crazy bouncing and stuff anyway we're gonna keep going the bags don't look cracked and worn or anything but when you see them all folded up like that instead of like that it does make you think so um yeah we're gonna keep carrying on uh put things back the way we found it and um hopefully everything works here we go Yeah, there she is all done everything made sense to me um got everything tied up nice this one doesn't belong there we got all the airlines tied down with some tech clamps from uh princess auto we've got our air tanks done i'm missing two fittings for uh the airlines they were the wrong ones that came in they gave me straights instead of 90s i need 90s and um the shims are wrong for my sock adjuster so i've only got um the back two done properly but i'm not going to put the slack adjusters to the brakes anyway because then i need to release the brakes to move the trailer so i still need to move it in and out uh, we got our stain for the wood so that's next um but those fittings aren't coming until tomorrow not a big deal i can get up those fittings easy enough what i'm going to do now is air it up in the front tie these hoses up properly all the way to the front and then we'll put air to the red line, the parking system. That should raise these two axles and not this one. Unless I flick the switch. I don't know what position the switch is hooked up in. Because this just makes it go up and down right here. But uh, basically now we can just listen for air leaks. And then we can flip it over one last time. Here we go. Let's see if I hear air rushing out right away. That's never good. I hear tanks filling. I hear suspension bags going up. Oh, sweetness. Those two lines are going to go when I hit full air, but that's okay. Those are not going up. That's good. Okay, so we got a leak on our leveling valve. So I will replace that in the morning. And the back doesn't go up or down. So we gotta figure that out. We got two holes in the back. 
The leveling valve works. It's my hose, so maybe a bad crimp on that one. So, best case scenario, it, one airline fitting is leaking on my lift or my height valve, and then that's it. Um, the toggle switch is broken at the back, so we'll replace that, and we're ready to flip this thing over. No leaks, no other leaks. Everything's tied off nice. We've got we've got height on the um, the hoses are all good, um, meaning that nothing's stretching or tight. Everything's going really really nice um now the airbags look better and as you can see there's nothing wrong with these airbags so i know now the time to do it but there is absolutely nothing wrong with these they're not weather cracked they're not worn in any way so i'm gonna leave it alone on top of that um do have two spare bags at the back here because i can lift the axle and take the bag out and move them to one of the front in a jam oh man this was a huge chunk just to get there and i want to clarify too with the um with the plate that we welded on the back i'm not trying to re-arch it because it never had an arch to begin with this is a cheaper trailer um it was always straight i just wanted to keep the bounce out of it so by putting uh the pressure on it um i didn't really want to arch it i thought i could bend it maybe a quarter inch or a half inch with the payloader on it but i was never trying to get a 10 inch arch in it um that wasn't like that from factory all i wanted to do was take the bounciness out of it just trying to stiffen it out um, and i'm going by what the neighbor said who ran floating equipment all the time he's like it's a good trailer but this is what you need to do just while you're at it do that now and that's what i did so um i did want to hear about the one guy who re-arched it by just starting at one end welding stitching it along and having the plate swing swing over and then at by the time it got to the end he arched it 10 inches 10 inches is a lot <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'd love to see that uh, but in the meantime uh, this was the majority of the work uh, we're going to throw the gooseneck or the detachable part on the trailer when we bring it back to VNR after it's painted and then we'll replace all the hydraulic lines and stuff on that um, still got to paint that but we can flip this over and paint this we got the wood we got some stain we're going to try and match to the red of the truck so it'll be tan and the red it's gonna be pretty sweet very very happy but uh, lots more to do let's get out here we go Now, imagine doing this with it right side up and having to roll underneath and back and forth a thousand times. You, you forget how many different fittings and airlines and everything there is. And then you gotta check for leaks and all that extra stuff. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't replace my relay valve right from the start or the, uh, the lift axle or the valve at the back, I wanted to make sure that everything worked and that I got all the hoses back in the right spot. Took this apart three months ago 
um, before the sandblasting and all the painting and the welding and all of that while we're waiting for parts. So I wanted to make sure that everything was proper and then ordered the parts. So like I said, the slacks are not hooked up because uh, then I have to put air to it to move it. Now with the wood on there and all these parts on there, I, I think even Kevin's forklift is going to have a hard time moving it, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, I didn't put the backing plates on the trailer because for safety, they need to be able to see the brake linings and measure the brake linings. Now I can tell them that they're new, but sometimes they take the effort to either pull the wheels off or pull the backing plates off. I did run a tap through all the bolts. So if they're going to pull the backing plates off just to measure the shoes and then put the backing plates back on again, I save that step, then they can pop the backing plates on when it's in there for safety. And then they don't have to pull the uh, the wheels and tires off. All of that is, uh, is, is labor rates for shops are getting expensive. So if I can save another couple hundred bucks, I'm going to try and do my best. Wire it up one more time, make sure that there's no leaks. And then that's the last time this thing's upside down. Now the back ones are filling as they should. Nice. They won't look all mangled and shitty. There's something about adding all the parts to it. I love it. Once you have it all one color, it looks very blah, very crappy. Once you start adding the different colors without all the overspray on it, it uh, I, I love that part of the build. So I can't wait to get some paint, some stickers on, the reflective stickers, put the lights in the back, the D sign. Oh, it's gonna be fantastic. All right, so if all goes well, this should jump the air in the back now and push it, because this should be deflated. And then if I jump this, it should air up that bag. And lift the axle. Nice. That's pretty cool. And then when I turn it again, so now it's releasing the air. It's releasing the air out of this bag and putting air into the into the lift bag. So oh, fantastic. So the one thing is I marked all these hoses and then I had one fitting that didn't go anywhere. And I'm like, well, I'm missing a line. Where does that go? But that's my vent. So it just, you work the, through the process and try to mark everything, take as many pictures as you can. It makes the reassembly so much easier. Always kind of plan as if somebody else is going to be putting it back together again, because that's someone else is you in the future. <laughs> and at the time you're like, oh, I remember how that goes. And then just mixing up a couple airlines really adds hours to it because you got to diagnose why my service brake's not working. Why is that tire locking up? Why is the suspension not working? So. Yeah, I don't hear any air leaks. We'll spray some soap and bubbles on it, but uh, I'm pretty confident at that. <sighs> the sound of silence. I don't know what I'm doing. I flipped this thing like <laughs> six times. And usually at night while I'm like, okay, one quick thing, I'll flip it for the morning. And uh, nice and smooth and it just goes over center and then the chains catch it and then you can lay it down. You gotta have just enough length of chain left so that you, you know you can reach it. 
And then, of course, we film it and chain snaps and it tips over. No damage, it's all steel, it's fine. It's just a little more aggressive than I'd like, so. I know it doesn't look like I know what I'm doing, but I know what I'm doing. So we're gonna stop this video here because this was hundreds and hundreds of hours of work between where we are already. By the time this video comes out, it will already have paint on it because that's happening this afternoon. We'll have the tires on it. The boards are already cut and stained. So we'll lay the boards on top. Um, we're, we're a lot farther than what this video is now, but you'll have to stick around for another video on that. Pretty cool, we found some white oak from Kevin that's been laying outside his barn for years, and uh, we were able to cut that up, and there's quite a bit of good wood on that. So we got wood for the 55, our new roll-off, and Kevin's hay wagons, and this trailer. So pretty excited about that. But um, I hope you got something out of it. This isn't really like a how-to on on this trailer um i've been out of the trade since um 2000 so that's 25 years already good thing that this is a 2005 still old drum brakes and i know there's better ways of doing it or different ways of doing it and tools that i might not have but that's okay i don't do these all day every day so um if it took a little bit longer that's okay at least i don't have more tools i gotta store inside the shop and whatnot but um stick around we still have to do the entire gooseneck part of this um, and basically that's just cleaning it up, new hydraulic lines, get rid of the pup and painting it and then we're going to do some really nice chrome on it, whether we do uh, um, cover up the, the uh, do a nice deck on the transfer truck, but either way all of the toolboxes are going to be redone in stainless. It'll be nice and shiny and we have a pile of work to do with this trailer uh, before the snow flies. So it's still beautiful out, it's still, but we're at the end of summer, heading into fall. So um, remember, get out there and work on it because if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.